Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig and I have an epic video for you today. We are checking out the Deacon, which is a full quill ostrich boot from brand new cowboy boot company, Ruho Boots. Plus, this is a giveaway video. So not only will one person be walking away with a brand new pair of boots in their size, two people will this month. That's right, let's get into it. Old boots got soul and I carry on this way and we get better every day. Real quick, I need to mention that this video is sponsored by Ruho. It is in my agreement with them not to let that sponsorship affect my opinion of these boots during this extended test, but it's still something that you should know. Huge thanks to Ruho for supporting the channel and making this giveaway possible. Let's get into the video. As I mentioned, Ruho is a brand new cowboy boot company out of Texas. And like many other cowboy boot companies that are popping up, Recently, they are getting their boots made in Leon, Mexico, which is the cowboy boot capital of the world. I really like their logo, by the way. The lion and their slogan, Be Brave, on point. Love it. Let's get this box open and see what we have inside. All right, so we have a little envelope here, a card about their story. We got a card about boot care, and a card about returns. They give you the return label with the boots. So if they don't fit, there is no stress at all. Gotta love it. Let's get these boots out. Woo! Look at this color. Wow, this full quill ostrich boot is beautiful. And I know some of you out there are already thinking about the giveaway, but the details about that will be at the end of the video right now. We got to get into the rundown. The Deacon boot from Ruho features the full quill ostrich on the vamp and the counter and damn do those quills pop. This is also their tan color boot, and I already know that there's gonna be a lot of questions about how does Ruho compare to Tacova's since they look so similar? Well, I was drawn to this boot in particular because Tacova's does not offer this color in their full quill ostrich round toe boot. They do have a similar color in their square toe ostrich boot, however. Speaking of the toe shape, this is a medium round toe or an R toe, which is a classic look and one of my favorite toe shapes ever. Moving on up here, we have a calfskin shaft with cording, and cording is super trendy right now. It seems like every company is doing it after Tacovas popularized the look. Tacovas didn't come up with cording, but they certainly made it very, very popular through all their advertising. And it is a classic, clean look for sure. And the Deacon boot is approximately 12 inches tall. Speaking of height, let's look at the height of this heel. It is a little bit taller than what we usually see on this channel. Usually we see around a one and a half inch tall heel. This one, however, is around one and five eighths to one and three quarters. So it's a little bit taller, but it is still a stacked leather heel, which is something we always like to see. Then we have a leather outsole here, which is held onto the boot with a Goodyear welt and lemon wood pegs. You always like to see both of those things. One, the Goodyear welt allows for this boot to be resold, which dramatically extends the life. You could have these boots for decades if you took care of them. And then you also have the lemon wood pegs in here, which is also a really nice thing to see because lemon wood expands in a similar way that leather does when wet. So everything can stay intact down here. And there are a lot of lemon wood pegs. And I'm also seeing a few nails dispersed throughout the bottom of this boot as well. So that's cool too. On the inside, we have a leather lining all the way through on the shaft and the foot. And like so many new cowboy boot companies right now, they are covering the seam on the inside of this boot with that leather lining, which makes this a super comfortable wear. I love it when companies do this, and this is a very modern feature, super sleek and super comfortable. 
For an insole, we have what Ruho is calling their Cloud Walk insole. It's non-removable and it's made up of leather and foam. The leather is on top, so you have a really nice soft feel to it, just like the rest of the boot. And then underneath that, you have foam and it feels much softer than what a Tacova's boot feels like. So this may be more comfortable than what Tacova's is if that foam holds up. And I really don't see why it wouldn't because they do have it topped with that leather there. Now I'm going to put this boot on and we'll see how they look and feel. Wow, these Deacon boots feel so great and the fit is really nice. I had to go with the 11D since Ruho does not offer B widths, but it ended up being okay. This doesn't squeeze my toes too much. Sometimes 11Ds do squeeze my toes since I'm a 12B. I would have to say that this fits pretty true and wow, is it comfortable. That cloud walk is definitely cloud-like for sure. Much softer than what you're getting from a Tacova's boot by far, but not even close to as close as soft as the Chisos boots. This is probably in between those two. So really nice cushion, really nice comfort with that leather line on top. And the ostrich leather is super soft, like butter soft, so nice and it looks great too. All right, so here's the POV like I've been offering recently. Love the color, love how much those quills pop here, and that toe shape is awesome. Not really noticing the taller heel here. It's about a quarter of an inch to three eighths inch taller than what we usually see. I have some other boots with a inch and five eighths heel, and it's not super noticeable when you're wearing it, so if you're interested and kind of getting scared about the taller heel, don't be. It feels very natural in this boot. I'd have to say that this fits true to size. It's snug where it needs to be. Maybe a little bit longer than the Tacovas. I love the feel of this, okay? The problem I had with the Tacovas was that I didn't have arch support because of the way that it's built, the lasts that they use. I might run into a similar issue with this. We'll see during the extended test, but right off the bat, I feel like I have much more support because of that cloud walk insole. It makes a huge difference in this boot for several different types of people to find a comfortable fit. I feel like they hit the nail on the head with this insole. Not so much that Chisos did, but Chisos is like that next level. Really comfortable boot, looks great, leather is spectacular. I think it's about time to give this boot an extended test. Don't forget to stick around to learn details about the giveaway. I decided to spend this extended test searching for statues featuring birds around eastern Massachusetts since these are ostrich boots. What? Bird statues? That sounds ridiculous. Yeah, well you're not a statue, so let's get at it. I headed on over to Newburyport, Massachusetts where I searched for my first bird statue and I figured it was a good time to do a really cool boot walking montage. I know the boots that will fit I know fools who will never quit and I knew them all before they hit it big on the thing about YouTube montages is they look really cool on YouTube, but in person when you're filming them, you just look like an ass. Well, no matter how I looked, I came across my first statue featuring a bird. This is the Peace Offering by Michael Alfano, and the dove conveys hope for peace, and its wings are actually open hands, making this a functioning bench. When you sit on it, not only could you discuss your differences with your enemies, but you could look really stoic on YouTube while doing it. Then the tail of this sculpture actually transforms into a hawk, representing hostility. The peace offering was a great first stop, but now it's off to my next statue in Boston proper. I headed down to Edgar Allan Poe Square to visit one of the creepiest 
most terrifying statues in the city. The Edgar Allan Poe statue. The Edgar Allan Poe statue by Stephanie Rocknick features the raven from Poe's famous poem flying out of his suitcase in classic spooky fashion. And Edgar Allan Poe, well, he really doesn't seem to care. Also, the suitcase seems to be spilling a bunch of his work, and it's topped with a heart from the classic story, The Telltale Heart, which was originally published in Boston. If visiting the Raven at the Edgar Allan Poe statue in Boston leaves you wondering whether or not you could pull off cowboy boots, wonder never more. Finally, my last bird statue visit takes me to Maidern, Massachusetts to see the most controversial of them all, the Seagull Cinderella statue by Donna Dodson. What makes it so controversial? Well, it's healthy bosom. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. In 2016, news sites around the internet reported on Dodson's seagull Cinderella because one man in New Bedford wanted it removed, even though it was a temporary art installment only planned to be there for a few months. His petition did not do well. In the petition, he said it was just bad art, tacky and whimsical. But Donna Dodson actually has a long history with this style, and there are many stories behind each one of her pieces. Early in my career, I did a lot of found object. Hubcaps, um, you know, brake drums, uh, you know, like screen door openers, and I would make these faces or kind of figures. And then I met Joseph Wheelwright. He's a local sculptor, and I apprenticed with him in his studio in the South End in Boston. That turned me on to wood carving, and that really opened up this whole other animal female figure vocabulary that I hadn't tapped into before. I would say it was much more like personal or autobiographical. And so that was like in the late 90s, 2000. So that became really like the core of my practice. Dodson says that part of the reason she chose the seagull form was because it was made on commission for a town by the water, but reasons run deeper than that. If Cinderella was gonna be an animal or bird, like what would be the most common bird. So that's kind of how the seagull idea was attached to the Cinderella idea for me, like the common bird. She's a commoner. She's not like a bald eagle or great hair and like something really exciting and convenient. She's like the average person. My inspiration for it actually was um, Anna Green Gables, the uh, woman who adopts her, Marilla, right? She always was like, she was like corseted and she was this very like bound of women, but she had this like totally big heart for this very wild child that she kind of adopted. Can Cinderella only be this one kind of myth for women? Putting an animal head on it kind of opened it up. Like it doesn't look like a specific type of person. It allowed more people to come into it and say like, this is me or like, because you're just trying to engage people around their imagination. And it certainly captured many people's imagination, including a group of artists who were able to raise money for breast cancer research thanks to all the attention that Seagull Cinderella received. Like I've never had that experience that something I made and put in public was such a, so much public outcry or so much public outpouring. And so it's interesting that I was focused on Seagull Cinderella. As I leave, I'm also focused on the Seagull Cinderella, recognizing that it pays to be yourself, whether that's in the art you make or the boots you wear. After that fun and a little bit quirky extended test, if you're interested in learning any more about the artists that were featured, the links to their work are in the description and I definitely recommend you checking them out. In addition to wearing these during the extended test, I also wore them during the Thanksgiving holiday week. So I have about two to two and a half weeks of wearing these on and off and it's given me a pretty good impression about how I feel about Ruho boots. And I know you guys have the question. Yes, these are very similar to Tacovas in how they're built, in how they look, and in how they fit. Maybe just a little bit smaller than the Tacovas, but pretty much they fit exactly the same. So if you have a Tacovas, you could probably get away with ordering the same size. These might be just a little bit smaller, but it also might be the amount of room that the insole takes up. On a couple of occasions, I had to use the boot jack 
to take it off. If you're interested in getting one of these, go to jeremiahcraig.com slash store. Speaking of the insole, the Cloud Walk is very comfortable and really forgiving for my 12B foot inside of this 11D boot. Ruho doesn't make B-Wits, neither does Tacovas. and if you guys remember, I had a problem with how the Tacovas arch landed on my foot in their 11D boot, and I had to give those to my dad. I don't have the same problem with this, so dad, you're not getting these. So the Cloudwalk insole is really nice with their memory foam and leather combo, but the memory foam does have one small drawback, is that it loses some support as you wear them throughout the day. So if you're wearing these for like 10, 12, 14 hours a day, you're on your feet, walking a lot, you will probably see some loss in support from that memory foam. I felt it most at the ball of my foot on days when I did a lot of walking on concrete and was just on my feet all day. But other than that, I really didn't have any problems wearing this boot. I thought it was comfortable pretty much all the time except when I had to be on my feet for 10 plus hours a day. Still, I like this insole much better than the insole that you find in the Tacova's boots. Now the reason why this looks so much like a Tacova's boot is because it uses the cording design in the shaft here, which is really trendy right now. There are more than a dozen cowboy boot companies, both old and new, making use of cording in their boots because a lot of people like it and a lot of businesses like it too because it's very approachable. I asked Ruho about why they decided to go with cording rather than doing a stitch pattern or inlays or something else to make them a little bit different and they said simple is better. They told me that the people in their market aren't really interested in boots with loud personalities. They're much more interested in sleek sophisticated looks like this cording and also it makes it more approachable for new boot wearers, which I agree with. You know, I wasn't all about going for crazy stitch patterns and crazy th colors on my first boot. It was this one right here. So it was just like a regular brown boot, right? I can understand the draw of something simple like this. However, if you are years into wearing cowboy boots, like decades or more, it kind of leaves a little bit to be desired. I mean. Of course, not everybody is going to want a Siegel Cinderella inlay on their cowboy boot, but I also don't want a cowboy boot that looks like every single other cowboy boot on the market right now, which is my main criticism against this boot. I can't stay on that criticism for too long though because these boots are coming in at $360. And when most other cowboy boot companies are selling their full quill ostrich boots for 400 plus, it kind of seems like the loss in personality is worth it to me. Overall, I think the Ruho Deacon Full Quill Ostrich boots look great, they are super comfortable, they're built well, and even though they lack in personality, they make up for it with a great price. Now let's talk about the giveaway. It's December, so that means this is a pretty big giveaway time of year, and I have two pairs of brand new cowboy boots for two winners out there. I got one for the guys and one for the gals. And winners will get to choose not only what size they want, but what kind of boot they want. No matter what you see on the Ruho website, if you win, you can choose your size and your leather, including the ostrich and the caiman. Here's what you have to do to enter. Like this video, subscribe to my channel right now, and then fill out the form at the link in the description where I will get your email, your YouTube username, so that I can contact you if you win. And then on December 18th, I will be announcing the winner on a live Boots and Ballads live stream full of music, boot chat, and more. But not only that, I'll be doing two extra live streams on December 5th and December 12th, where if you join me live and comment, you will automatically get an extra entry into winning a pair of boots and possibly more. So be sure to join me and enter at the link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe, by the way, and a huge thanks to Ruho for making this the most wonderful time of year. Peace, everybody. Have a good one. They got that simple look that's easy to approach, you know, with a sophisticated style that fits in wherever you happen to go at a great price, at a great comfort. It's Ruho. Thanks for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe while you're here. My name is Jeremiah Craig. Huge thanks to Ruho for making this possible. 
I'll see you on the live streams. <laughs>